idea was a foreign one, not a foreign one, it was in philosophy, but it was a foreign one to any government of Europe. Our founders came from European countries, and where did those leaders believe rights went to? They went to the king, to the sovereign, the divine right of kings. And it was their obligation to use those rights that God had given him or her for the benefit of the people. But it was their job to control things. In America, we said, no. These people who are now ridiculed by many folks on the American left, were the elite of society. And yet, they were willing to give rights to all in society, not originally all but certainly in the Declaration of All. It didn't work out that way in the, initially in the Constitution, but in the Declaration it was all. And so here you have these, these, these men of the elite of society, imagine, saying, we are going to trust the hard scrabble people of America with freedom. Quite a leap of faith. The idea that we could build a great country trusting free people instead of government control. And then they went on and said that God gives us rights. And of course, when God gives us rights, what else does he expect of us? What comes with rights? Responsibility. Responsibility to whom? To the giver of the rights. There was a moral code by which we were to live. That's why people say this is a Judeo-Christian country. Why? Because our rights come from God. And if you read the, that we have the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, obviously the foundational right, life, which is, of course, under assault in this country. Freedom, which is absolutely under assault. And then the pursuit of happiness is very important because as Republicans, we need to have this discussion. We're going to have it tomorrow night. What does that really mean? There are some within our ranks, libertarians, who believe the pursuit of happiness means the pursuit of pleasure, to do whatever you want to do. That is what our founders intended. It is absolutely not. The pursuit, if you, read, you look up the definition, dictionary definition of happiness at the time of the founders, and you will see the definition say, to do the morally right thing. Because that's what our founders understood would lead to happiness. Our, found, our country was founded as a moral enterprise. John Adams said, after the drafting of the Constitution, our con this Constitution was made for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate for the governance of any other. That's what our, our Constitution was founded, to protect these freedoms. If you think about what the Constitution is really all about, it's for limited government and free people to protect life and liberty so people can pursue God's will for you, your family, your country. And guess what? It worked. America transformed the world. You see, we need to have leaders who remind us, not of our faults all the time, we certainly get that every day, but our leaders need to remind us who we are and why we became the greatest country in the history of the world. At the time of the Declaration of Independence, life expectancy in America was 35 to 40 years of age. We were an agrarian society. Anybody know what it was at the time of Jesus Christ? agrarian society with life expectancy of 35 to 40 years of age. 1,800 years of human history. 1,800 years of those who are the leaders of government in control of the rights, giving and bestowing rights to the people as they saw fit. And the human condition did not change. But for the first time in human history, we said, no, rights come to you and we are going to allow people to be free. The one thing the federal government is about is protecting life and liberty. And we will build a great country from the bottom up, not the top down. Life expectancy is now close to 80. We've 
gone through an industrial revolution, a technology revolution. The poorest person in America today, from the standpoint of creature comforts, is wealthier than the wealthiest people 50 years ago. The dynamism of this country, of free people and limited government, transformed the world. It wasn't just a coincidence that it happened at that period of time in, America, in the history of the world. Did it happen in the Muslim world over the last 200 years? No. Did it happen in Africa? Did it happen in South America? If it did in any of those places, it's because they borrowed from us. We are exceptional. We are a great country because we were founded a great country. The premise of America. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is what's at stake in this things that happened over the past 70 years since the Great Society programs. Excuse me, the New Deal, the Great Society programs. But what happened over the past two years caused me to come out and speak to the public again after losing my race in 2006. It caused me to go out and fight because I see exactly where America is headed. It is why the Tea Party is the Tea Party. Because they see where America is. And that is one bill, one bill, which is the straw that will break the camel's back and will create an America that is irreversibly, irreversibly in decline. And that bill is Obamacare. Is it any wonder that for a hundred years the progressive movement in this country has had one? One holy grail. And it's not because they care. For 1,800 years, government cared. It's because that is the ultimate way to get back the power that our founders took away from government. 